welcome to the January Mom Talk Thrive. I'm Julie Young. And I'm Julie Keating. And we are excited to see you all. Um, just a few announcements real quick. There are a lot of new uh, online classes, Growing Families classes starting. You can go to the growingfamilies.life website, check them out. Some of them have already started or are full, but I think there are a few that you might be able to get into. Uh, and then the next, next Mom Talk Thrive is on February 26th. You want to mark your calendars. I think we try to do the fourth Monday of every month, which is why um, January has five Mondays. So we're not in the last Monday, but the fourth Monday of every month. All right, so we are going to be talking about battlegrounds and facing our greatest enemy. And we are all in a battle. Uh, there's a lot of battles that we fight every day. And um, I don't know, some of you may be on there going, yeah, totally feel it. I'm there. Let's let's talk about this and what we do about it. Some of you might be thinking, eh, I don't really feel like I'm in a battle. But something to think about um, when you go to bed at night and there's like a weariness. Never just I'm so exhausted. Oops, I'm just going to do that. Um, I was discerning that there are two different types of weariness that I experience. There's one, the physical. I've been chasing toddlers all day. Maybe I did a new workout. I did, you know, it was a really busy day. Um, I mean, just having toddlers in your house was enough to physically <laughs> exhaust me, taking kids to school, to various lessons or whatever it was. So at the end of the day, there is a physical weariness. In some ways, those when I hit the bed from being physically weary, it feels really good. It's like, whoo, there was a I worked my body hard type of, of thing. But there's some times where I go to bed and I just feel like I've been beat up. I'm just, I'm really weary because I've been beat up. And that's when I recognize I have been in a battle all day. And it often, uh, you know, are thoughts that are in my mind that I've been thinking through all day, a frustration that I feel, maybe I feel offended, uh, maybe I'm mad. It's all those uh, emotions and feelings that I'm battling in my spirit, in my emotions that can lead to a weariness. And that's what we want to talk about is those battles that we fight. What are those battles? Let's talk about who we're even fighting. Mm, that's so good. And I mean, and I know we're the audience in which we're talking to. I mean, we all know that we have an enemy and the enemy is Satan. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that we just spend a little time talking about his schemes because I think what, creating an awareness and an understanding will help us to tap into um, fighting the right battle and using the right armor. And so we're going to get into that as we talk, but I think it's important that we, uh, we recognize that there is an enemy that wants to take out our family yeah. because I mean, I think we've all heard that saying, you know, the best way to take out a nation is start with the husband and wife relationship. And we've seen it in culture, right? That's what we're, that's what's, culture is missing right now is the solid husband and wife relationship. And that affects the community that affects generations that affects states, city um, states, and then nations and then the world. And so it's so subtle, but it's so important that we understand that what we're doing is good. Like what we are doing is going to aggravate the enemy just by having a solid marriage, sewing into your family, sewing into your um, your husband and wife relationship and your children. So not to scare anybody, but we do have targets on our back. Like the enemy wants to take us out. And I think it's important that we understand that so that we can see, um, have those discern that discernment and those eyes to see, but we all know the enemy wants to hurt us and to harm us but he can't destroy us. Mm -hmm. And that is one of our points is that we have what it takes to be victorious just because we're doing good, just because we're Christians, just because we are having solid husband and wife relationships doesn't mean that um, we need to walk in fear. Right. And so what we can do is recognize that, but we're gonna tap into those things that are gonna keep us on the victorious side and not on a victim side. Yes. And so, yes, you may feel like you're walking in a battle and you know weary, but you know what, we are victorious and to walk in that. And so that's gonna be one of our points um, a little bit later, but we, we just wanted to, we all know Satan, we all know his, um, his schemes and you know, we know his place, 
in front of the most high God is on his knees. We've heard mm -hmm. Satan is under our feet. He is by the shed blood of Jesus. He is under our feet. Mm -hmm. He likes to bully us. Um, he's quiet when the father is there. And so, you know, that you've heard speak the name of Jesus because it just breaks things. Right. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that later. I kind of picture this playground where yeah. like two kids are on the playground and one's a big bully and is bullying the little kid. And then the little kid's dad comes up and the bully's like, yeah. You know, all of a sudden they're little, and and That's I just so good. I just picture yes. that that Satan's good. bullying, bullying me, and when I say, "Daddy, go," you know, "Father, God, help me," you know, God's like. There you <laughs> I'm go. right here. There you so, go. Anyway, did there we go. No, that's so good. Have that picture. That's so good. That's so good. So, um, and he has um some plans, and we're so our point number one is we have an enemy who wants to divide us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, completely wants to divide us. And part of dividing us is getting us by ourselves. Mm. You know, a lot of animals travel in packs, they travel in herds. And the one that maybe is injured, the one that is weaker will lag behind. And that's the one that the um, the enemy goes after. That's the one that they think is the prey. That's easy, easy target. I remember uh, as the Israelites were fleeing Egypt. I don't remember if it was the Amalekites or the Moabites, but one of the enemies of the Israelites uh, picked off the weaker ones. So if Satan can divide us, get us separate, get us lonely, get us thinking that um, we can do things on their own, that's one of his schemes. So recognizing that. Think about when Peter denied Jesus. Yeah. He was by himself. He was separated from the rest of the disciples. First Peter 5, 8 says, be sober minded, be alert. Your adversary, the devil is prowling around like a roaring lion looking for anyone he can devour. So my encouragement to you is, you know, to find a small group, to find some mentors, to walk life with people, your husband, uh, your mom, you know, anyone who will come with you and speak truth to you, who will be part of your mm. pack, part of your herd, so that you aren't on your own. And we're gonna talk about how we can be deceived and some thoughts can get into our mind. And it's that that friend, you know, if I were to say, Julie, I'm just, I'm feeling this, I think I'm this, because our emotions as women, especially, we could tend to be very emotional. And we just have these thoughts that can start running in our head. And when I verbalize them to my husband or to Julie, to a friend or to my mentor, or to Anne Marie, and they're like, that's not true. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes it's just that, oh, and bringing us back. It's like bringing us in, protecting us from our enemy who's just prowling around telling us lies, which is our next point. Can I, can I just add on that yeah. um, real quick? Because um, I think even even what that looks like in marriage mm, yeah. is dividing us amongst our husband, yeah. you know, and Satan loves to do that, right? I mean, we're going to get into, you know, his, his more of his schemes, but he wants to divide the husband and wife, right? I mean, you see it, kids want to play off mom and dad, right? And, and we start to believe it would be very easy as we become more isolated from let's pretend like we're married but you know i start to pull away and become more isolated yeah. and then i start to be believe i'm better off alone yeah. um this isn't what i signed up for um and we're then that whole that division the other person is, is the, enemy. the enemy yeah and, and, and we recognize that you know what and there's times that don and i will hit a bump and i'm like i am so right i am so right I know I'm so right, but, and he, and he'll be like, I know I'm right too. But I mean, where you can, in those moments when you have like a standoff, maybe you guys, that doesn't happen in your family, but where you feel like you have a little bit of a standoff and it's like, it takes one person to say, you know what? We're not going to let the enemy win. Yeah. Let's pray. Sometimes let's just pray. Just, let's pray. And you know what? We're I'm not really going to let the enemy, you, but, right? we're gonna pray. but I think once we say that, we're not going to let the enemy do what he wants to do. And it's usually right before you're teaching a class. It's usually right before, you know, you're having company over or, or something yeah. and he wants to get in, but it's like, you know what, we're going to recognize it and we're going to de be defeat. We're going to defeat him together yeah. as opposed to me looking at 
walked on thinking, you know what, I'm so right and you are so wrong. And that's what this is all about is me being right and you're wrong, right? And so it's not that at all. He wants to pit us against each other. So if you can be an, a, a, um, in tune to that in your marriage and, and, and even your heart and how you're looking at your husband, um, you know, it, is there creating a divide? And just to be aware of that, because that's the, one of the schemes. And I have to just add one more thing, Julie. Yeah. I remember going through a season in our marriage where I was feeling like um, um, for the sake of peace, I wasn't speaking up. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know what, it's just not that big a deal. But And if it really wasn't that big a deal, it wouldn't be that big a deal. But it wasn't that big a deal, but it was. And I was just creating walls. Mm -hmm. And I was, and I remember the Lord saying, Julie, you are responsible for your heart. You're not responsible for, for, for Dawn's actions. You're responsible for your heart. And you're allowing yourself to be divided by how you are thinking you're protecting your heart so that you don't get hurt. When in reality, you're, you're really hurt. <laughs> relationship mm -hmm. and you're responsible for that so again a scheme to divide us right and so for the sake of peace you know what the, the the lord can work it out but if you're pulling back in your marriage just know that that's exactly what the enemy wants to get you to do is to pull back and to isolate you so good julie can i can i yeah. just i'm glad you mentioned it julie k because i had written myself a note about the divide can come between a husband and wife too because you are two unique individuals bringing in um certain mindsets that you never even realized that you had until you start having children i mean you may have had to work through some things with finances and everything and thought oh i didn't realize you thought about money that way but then you start having children and that's where there can be other conflicts that either um, you start to divide and say, I'm right, and you're wrong. And, and that's really why we so emphasize as couples to go through classes together so that you're both hearing the same things that you can dialogue and say, okay, this isn't how I was raised. Um, and, and it might be how you were raised, but not your husband. And so you can dialogue those things and then come to unity um, in what you're going to do in creating a home, a life-giving home environment for your children. And Julie, you mentioned um, sometimes we're silent because we want to keep peace. Sometimes we're silent because we think we're being more self-righteous by not. Uh, and we're oh, yeah. So, so um, it's, you know, it's one of those things. And I just, you'd think after all these years, I'd get my act together, but just even recently, uh, there's been some situations and I thought, Lord, reveal any hurt the way in me. And so, I mean, it's as long as we're alive, he's continuing to refine us. So don't be surprised if you even get to be my age and you think, oh, Lord, am I still working on this? Well, yeah, because there are still things that we're going to have to be working on. So, uh, but I'm glad you mentioned that about the husband and wife, because that's where some of the first separation and divide can come in. Yeah, okay absolutely. take it away okay. no, thank you. that's so good that's really good and it's recognizing you know we started off saying we have an enemy and recognizing satan is our enemy not our husband not our mother-in-law not our children not you know think of there's probably someone in your life going you know they frustrate me they they always do this to me they're always poking at me they're always they're just always getting under my skin and that very person could be the person that you think you're in a battle with, but you're not at all. You're in a battle with Satan. He's just using, that's just a really easy target for him uh, for whatever reason, or for you knowing your weaknesses. I don't mean that that person is the unspiritual one necessarily. Uh, he just knows your weaknesses. He's so cunning and he's just all, you know, you talk about Emory, you're still, the Lord's still refining you and you still have a cunning enemy who's mm -hmm. after you. Uh, until we take our last breath, our enemy wants to hurt us. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy what we have. But there is hope, and that's where we're at. Yeah. Okay, so our first point was that the enemy wants to divide us. Our second point is that he wants to deceive us. Hmm. He is the father of all lies. Uh, John 8, 44 says, you are of your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he tells a lie, he speaks from his own nature because he is a liar and the father of lies. And 
two things from this, um, and it has to do with identity, is one, the enemy hides his identity. The enemy hides his identity. You know, even my, um, Gary loves to fish, I have my son loves to fish. And if you think about a fisherman, they have a hook because they're trying to hook the fish, but what do they have to do? They have to disguise it. They have to put some bait on it. They put a worm or a shrimp or a lure or something to disguise that hook. Mm -hmm. And that's what our enemy does. He disguises himself. Uh, I think there's a verse in James that says he disguises himself as the father of lights. So often, and I talk to my kids about this, so often children's books or, or whatever, when there's a picture of Satan, he's just a really evil looking, eh. and so we think, oh, I'll recognize that. But that's not what Satan looks like. He's actually, the Bible says he is actually very beautiful in appearance, physically very beautiful. And so that we're attracted, we're drawn to what he's doing, but it's all a disguise. There is nothing good and nothing beautiful about Satan. I remember seeing an Easter play. Gary was the one who first pointed this out to me years ago. There was an Easter play about the passion of the Christ. And they showed, um, I think, in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus was praying, you know, Satan kind of just prancing around him. And he was an evil looking person. And I remember Gary saying at the end, he goes, just one thing. They should have made Satan look really handsome and beautiful. And I was like, what? <laughs> but he is the father of lights. Um, okay, so and the enemy hides his identity, and then the enemy also wants to hide our identity. Enemy wants to hide our identity. Um, he doesn't want, oh, shoot, I forgot one thing. Back to the enemy hides his identity. Um, I thought there was a really good analogy I heard. Just think about the attackers on 9-11. Um, they disguised themselves as regular passengers. They were the enemy getting on a plane, but they were disguising their true identity. Mm. So Satan does the same. Can I just mention one thing? Yeah. I remember this really hit me hard and it said, kind of to your point about Satan isn't this ugly creature. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost as if he's everything you've ever wanted. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not entirely true. Of course, we want healthy marriages. We want healthy families, you know, all of that. But he he wants he knows that we we want god to be the throne of our heart and so he's trying to figure out a way to your heart mm -hmm. and so he is scheming for that placement and so you know what are those things that could get you off track because that's mm -hmm. what he's disguising himself as mm -hmm. you know he's promising you the position he's promising you the provision he's promising you all of these things that you you deeply want, but he's promising them to you in something that's disguised as mm -hmm. this lure. And I thought, you know, that that was really interesting. To, I felt like that I could really resonate with, um, or that just really helped me a lot. And yeah. wow, he knows my heart, and he he he's after it. He it, the attack is on my heart. He wants that throne, that placement. And so he knows what I deeply, deeply want, and he wants to become that to me. So I don't have to trust God to be that to me. Mm -hmm. Ooh, you know what I mean? I sit on that one for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, good. we do, just need to be theologically a little bit careful. Yes. He's not <laughs> all going as God is. Right. So I don't want anybody to, um, you know, I don't know where we're all at in our in our growth journey, um, but he does. He observes. I don't know if any of you have ever read the screw tape letters um if you haven't it's something something worth reading no matter where you are in your journey and it's it's a whole dialogue between satan and his dominions that he's things but um he does go around watching and everything so knows the weak points but he does not he he's not like god which right. i think is understood but i just want to make sure <laughs> yeah, it's really it's true. Point. thank yeah. you for that emory because yeah we don't want to communicate yeah. that yes and we're going to get to our our warfare our weapons yeah but so. there is hope but right now it's like yeah. oh. <laughs> it's important it's to fun. understand right he's he's there to divide and he's there to deceit and now we're going to get to this the next one yeah unless you wanted to well to just that. the other thing that um you know the enemy wants to hide our identity and um thinking about are you are we defined by what has consumed us mm -hmm. instead of who has created us are we defined by what has consumed us instead of who has created us? 
So that's what do you mean by that? So um, when there's the example in Mark five, when um, Jesus approached uh, the man who was possessed by demons that eventually Jesus Got it. put the demons into the pigs and Jesus asked, so there's this man who's demon possessed and he asked the man, uh, what is your name? And the response was, my name is Legion because we are many. So it was the demon inside the man that answered. Mm. And so this man was defined by what consumed him. Mm. He was defined by this legion of demons mm. that had consumed him mm -hmm. instead of who had created him. Yes, that's good. So I just think sometimes we can be filled and we're gonna talk a little bit about shame and, and things that define it, that can define us, but that's not our identity. And I think we've done a lot of different, we've done some mom talk, um, lives and we've talked a lot about identity and letting that define us mm -hmm. and what who Jesus says we are instead of who anyone else including our enemy wants us to believe that we are is this where you're going to add to the point um of where he tax what could have been ours I was going to do that later but we can oh, do it no, no, no. anytime nope, as long as I that's a good one important yep okay that's a good one yeah mm -hmm. oh golly there's so much that that we could go on but um I love Second Chronicles seven fourteen, and some of you have probably heard it. And oftentimes, it refers to uh, the nation that we live in. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will hear the heal their land. But even think of that verse as I will heal their marriage, I will heal their family, I will heal their relationship with their mother in law. I will heal their relationship with their sister, whatever it is. And so going back to that verse, what do we have to do? We have to humble ourselves. We have to pray. We have to seek God. We have to repent. Um, then I will hear from heaven and he will hear that. So that's part of the battle mm. um, that we do. And it's it, there is a part and we're going to talk about it. Yes, part, but. so good. And I, I just wanted to add to that whole identity, right? Here we are, moms, um, wives disciples and you know you, you we want he wants to divide us and then he wants to deceive us right so he wants to deceive us into thinking you're not a good mom mm -hmm. you know you you know this child is too much for you you know all of the things right all of the things that he can whisper into our head and so how important it is for us to be attuned to those lies that we might be even subtly entertaining because we know that that's not true. Right. Um, you know, I didn't sign up for this. This is this is bigger than me. It's it's too hard. All of those things. And so just to understand and we've done a we've done a lot about um, talking to lies and deception, but just to be mindful of that of what is going on in your thought realm because he does want to deceive you into thinking that you are less than God created mm -hmm. you to be. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I even think that example I gave in Mark 5 where the, the demon possessed man, I mean, you can just picture him. He's just tormented. They said chains couldn't even hold him down. And then once Jesus sent the demon into the pigs, it says that the man was um, sitting, dressed, and in his right mind. Mm. So he was sitting, was to represent, uh, he was at peace. Mm. He was dressed. There was no more shame. He was no longer mm -hmm. naked. He was dressed and he, he was in his right mind. Mm -hmm. He was restored and renewed. So if you are feeling, you know, this weariness from this battle that you may be in a relationship, know that God's in true intention is for you to have peace, no shame, restored and renewed. That's his goal. Yes. That's his true intention. And I'm thinking so tired at the end of the day of taking care of children, right? But we know who we are in Christ. And so we aren't by what consumes us, right? Weary and, and all of the things we are, you know what? I am a child of God. I am loved by God. I'm having a hard day, but you know what? He loves me and, um, and I'm victorious in, in Jesus name. And you know what? Tomorrow's a new day. Mm -hmm. And so just speaking that over you, reminding yourself who you are comes from our mouth. Yeah. And so, because we aren't, aren't, um, you know, yeah. by how we feel. I heard someone say, I haven't personally done this, but I think it's brilliant. Take 10 minutes, spend some time, get your journal and write down what God thinks of you. Mm. And from what I've heard, you, we usually start off very churchy and quoting scriptures. You know, I am more than a conqueror. I am, which is great. It's all true. It's all true. 
But, um, you know, what is God saying to you? You know, he likes me. He really, I mean, isn't that a neat picture? God likes me. He likes to spend time with me. I mean, they're truths from scripture, but just writing that down could be really helpful to reframe the truths of what God thinks of us. All right, so we said the enemy wants to divide us. He wants to deceive us. Number three is he wants to distract us. Mm. And Proverbs 4, 25 through 27 says, let your eyes look forward, fix your gaze straight ahead. Carefully consider the path for your feet and all your ways will be established. Don't turn to the right or to the left. Keep your feet away from evil. So I've been thinking about this a lot. We heard a message a few weeks ago about distractions. So I've been asking the Lord and just really thinking for myself, what distracts me? What distracts me from the Lord? And the opposite of distraction is focus. So I want to focus. And um, there's a lot of things that distract me, but one that I'm just going to bring up because I struggle with it. And I'm going to guess that maybe some of you do too, but it is this great little device right here. And I'll just give an example. You know, I'm doing my quiet time and um, I've done the Bible recap at times, which, you know, has a podcast. So I read the word and then I listen to the podcast. So I need my phone to listen to the podcast. Or sometimes I'll go on version, and I will do, you know, the reverse of the day it has a whole um, like story that you can go through. And there's a, a, a devotional and a, a short teaching. So I'll, I'll use my phone for that. Or sometimes I don't have my paper Bible with me. So I use you know, the e-version of the Bible, you know, all good stuff. But my lack of focus can be I'm there and oh, oh, golly, someone just texted, but I'll just check it real quick. Oh, that is so sweet. Let me just respond to them. And oh, oh, wow, a face. Oh, they saw my face. Oh, they just had a baby. No way. Let me come out of that. And I am 100 miles away from the incredible fellowship that I was having. The Lord, he was just about to tell me something really good. <laughs> Um, and what can happen is if we get too distracted is it can lead to apathy because if we allow ourselves to continually be distracted, we're not going to act on maybe what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. So recognize whether it's the phone for you and maybe you just put the phone in another room and do, you know, read God's word and journal and spend time with him without the phone even nearby, whatever it is to you. And I know you have kids. I'm not saying get rid of the kids. Yes, they can be. <laughs> <laughs> that is the season that you are in. <laughs> um, so you can't count them as, as distraction, but recognize what it is that's pulling you away from the Lord. Is it a tool that Satan is using? Is it our own flesh just getting distracted? Mm, that's so good. And, you know, when we talk about these things, um, you know, we were praying earlier for this group and just ask the Lord, you know, is there one, what is one thing maybe that um, I'm allowing to divide me and my heart, in my family, in my marriage? What's one thing where I'm allowing myself to be deceived? Mm -hmm. And is there something that I am believing that isn't true? And then here, is there something, Lord, that you know, the new year, a lot of times we change different behaviors and, and try to shore up some things where maybe we've gotten off track. But, you know, is there something that may be dis a distraction to him, to your family? Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like good, better, best. You know, is there one thing rather than walking in shame, getting off this call of, oh, my goodness, I, you know, the Lord convicted me on all these things. But is there like one thing? And, um, and in your season of life, what is the one thing that would have the most impact? And, and sometimes there's low hanging fruit, just some simple, some simple tweaks that can really make a difference. And yeah. so just ask yourself that. Um, yeah, I even think it, it's helpful for me. If you get off this call and you're like, oh, there's so much, write it down. Yeah. And it, it may overwhelm you. You might have a list of 10 things. My phone distracts me this, this, this. You know all these things that you want to change in your life okay cover up that list and just look at one and think okay i want to on this one thing and just focus there and it to change a behavior takes discipline it takes a lot of discipline to do this i think of um you know someone who decides i want to start eating right and exercise and so they're trying to change some of their food choices and they're trying to you know actually get out there and work out and that takes a lot of discipline to do that 
But if you have changed a habit and you keep doing it over and you just discipline, you make yourself do it and you do it, eventually it's going to become a habit. Mm -hmm. There's like a barrier that at some point you jump over and then there's going to be at some point where you wake up and you're not even considering having a Pop-Tart for breakfast. You actually want that avocado toast. (laughs) But for a while there, it takes all your willpower not to have the Pop-Tart or you have really don't want to go for a walk. You make yourself go for a walk. And then one day it's like, you know what? I really want to go for a walk. And so there's a lot of things. Just take one thing at a time and work at, work at, work at it. Ask the Lord to help you and it will make a habit. Then go to number two and just little bits, little bits every year. Yeah, it's so good. That's so true. All right. So number four. So the enemy wants to divide us, deceive us, distract us. And this is the best one of all. Our enemy cannot destroy us. Yeah. He can hurt so us, good. but he cannot destroy us. You want to jump on that? Um, I can. Yeah. John, first John 4, 4 says, you, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Mm-hmm. Post that everywhere. The one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the, war, the world. Um the longer go ahead no nope. well, i was just gonna say the longer evil holds us the stronger the hold becomes and so don't play around with evil um meaning you know if there's some sin you're like eh, i'm just gonna dabble in it and the longer we can dabble in something the bigger a hold it will get onto us if there's anything that you're doing in secret that you wouldn't want anyone to know There's probably a reason you want to keep something in the dark, you know, take that to the Lord. I'm not saying any of this to to shame anyone, because I think we can all think of things that we've done in secret that we don't want anyone to know. It's a human being problem. But, you know, bring it to the Lord. He knows he sees it and just say, help, help. Mm -hmm. Sometimes just a one word, Lord, uh, prayer, you know, just help. Mm -hmm. Um. There's a, the verse in 1 Corinthians 10, 23 that says, um, everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. So sometimes it's not even a sin. Sometimes it's just a behavior that's not beneficial to you. You know, ask the Lord, okay, this is permissible. I'm not sinning, but is this beneficial to me? Is this something, you know, that would be better if I didn't do? And I think the whole, um, scripture that you just read about you know greater is he that is in Mm -hmm. us than he that's in the world and when we recognize that the same spirit that rose jesus from the dead is within us that we have the ability to tap into that and so in our natural selves there's a lot of things that feel very big maybe there's an issue in your marriage maybe there's an issue with your child maybe there's just an issue with some things that you're you're personally fighting Right. So all of these things, they might feel bigger than us, but in the natural, we are limited. But if we do the things in the natural that we can, which is, okay, Lord, pray, the journal, worship, all of these things that we can do, it, 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 it's almost like it ignites the supernatural, like yes, God yeah. meets us. And so I, I love to think of it as like, I am partnered with this power, this armor, this armory to defeat this Mm -hmm. Satan. Like I am victorious. I have that power, not in me, but in the the spirit that's in me to become a victor, not a victim. And so it's up to me though, to tap into that. Me alone, defeated. But when I step into and rise up in confidence, no Satan, you cannot have my marriage. No Satan, you cannot have my family. And you know what, you can't have my thoughts. And you know what? I. Uh, nor my health or my mental health or whatever you're defeated and you start to tap into what you have so what are those things right reading the word of god scripture worship music journaling i mean just little things and it's like lord meet me where i'm at i know we are all busy moms but what is it that i can do you know what turning on worship music isn't that doesn't require that much but it can change the atmosphere in your home and it can feed it can speak truth to your mind and and enable you to walk in that power and that victory that is ours it's ours we just have to claim it and walk in that and so i just want to encourage you to remember 
who's with you in this, right? In the natural, we can't, but there is the supernatural. And that is tapping into the power that was given to us by the, the crucifixion, the blood. And so, and I, I know there's been times when I, all I can utter is the name Jesus. You know what? I feel so tormented sometimes, you know, or defeated or weary, but you know what? There is power in the name of Jesus. Just say the name Jesus. It breaks things. There's, you know, there's, there is a warfare that's going on that we don't see. So we see a lot. We see a lot that's happening. We don't see a lot that's happening up here. And that is my conviction so much lately is, you know what? I want to be be praying to change atmospheres where I am and to um, speak on behalf of my children and to pray prayers for them so that they, that the schemes of the enemy are defeated and deflected and, 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 and and um, where they're walking in victory they're making good decisions and so it comes with prayer and speaking the word of god so just remember the power that we have because we have jesus that lives the power of jesus that lives within us when he dwells in our hearts so yeah and you talk about the armor i mean if if you're not familiar with the armor of god in ephesians 6 i mean that is our battle plan right there you know the helmet of salvation the sword of the spirit which is the only offensive weapon in there the rest are defensive but that's a great one to do with your kids too um there's all sorts of great children's books on the armor of god but preparing them for battle yes Um, probably the last thing um that i can think of that i want to talk about there's a quote that john eldridge um said in waking the dead it's the story of your life is a story of the long and brutal assault on your heart by the one who knows what you could be Mm. and he fears it and the enemy knows our potential i remember someone saying that sometimes one of the schemes of the enemy isn't necessarily to um to hurt you make you go backwards to put but to prevent you from what you can accomplish in the strength of christ and um i love in the book of joel um you know it I just want to say, if you feel like, ah, oh, I probably have been, I know there have been times in my life where choices that I've made, I'm like, ah, oh, you know, there was probably more that I could have done or, it, you know, that, that the Lord could have used me for. And I can start to feel like, ah, oh. but I just want to read from you from Joel that even now declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. So repent to him, Mm. rend your heart, which means to tear, tear your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord, your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. And he relents from sending calamity. And then later in chapter two, he says, I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten, Uh, the great locust and the young locusts, the, the great army that I send among you. And afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. So this this is a message that Julie and I heard, and it's just been really running around in my heart and in my mind, Mm -hmm. and just a good reminder Uh, the battle I'm in and that when there are things that cause me anxiety, frustration, I take it to the Lord and say, this is a battle beyond me. There's a battle happening, raging in the um, spiritual world that I don't even see. And the way that I fight that is through prayer. The way that I fight that is going to you, God, and asking for you help, for help from you. So I love that. Anything else? Can I just add, uh, I mean, and this was good because we we need to understand where all of these things are coming from, which hopefully everybody does understand, but it can still, you know, get us down. And just even your last, the last points too, about um, that he cannot destroy us. And remember that greater is he that is in us than he is in in the world. And I probably say that to myself every single day, just to remind myself that that is, that is the truth. And for some, whatever reason, I was thinking, we all have some foolish lies. We know that they're lies that we're believing, but we have to replace those lies with truth. So we have to speak, tr- we have to speak life to ourselves and just memorizing just a few, a few little thoughts that are true. But the one that came to mind was <clears throat> that to God, we are the apple of his, uh, in his eyes, the apple of his eye. And there are, so I thought, what exactly does that mean? So I 
quickly looked it up and it says, since the pupil is essential to vision, it was held to be something very precious. Thus, when you call someone the apple of your eye, you are telling them they are cherished. The phrase is from the Bible in which it appears in four books in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy, Psalms, Proverbs, and Lamentation. Um, and so even, even if that's all you think about, if someone has said something negative, be it, you know, your mother-in-law, your mother, your husband, whomever, um, that is contrary to who you are, just say, no, I am the apple of God's eyes. He rejoices over me with singing. It just those for me, at least, just those thoughts, it's like, that's right, that's who I am, and not allow the lies that are trying to, to bring you down and discourage you, because especially for those of you that, that are on the younger side, still very much in the throes of your parenting, you can get so weighed down and discouraged, and when your kids are not doing your training and training and training, and it's like, are they even getting it? That's why it's nice to have some of the seasoned moms on because they can tell you they are getting it. Because, it takes a while. <laughs> you know, it, ta it takes a while. I mean, we read Proverbs um, about they'll rise up and call call you blessed. You don't, don't expect that usually from <laughs> your kids until they get to be well into their teen years and some maybe even in their 20s and they realize, oh, no. Wow she really was a good woman and um and they will come back and tell you that i mean sometimes they'll give you your little ones they love you no matter what but there comes that time where you know you're sometimes even even the best of kids with the best of training are they going to cop you attitudes sometimes so um don't take it personally just know that uh as we say with toddlers they're doing what toddlers do and our kids, just like us, are in the growth process. And sometimes we do things, it's just what we humans do. And, uh, and God loves us in spite of us, and we are the apple of his eye. So um, just, you know, just remember those positive things and um, and speak life to yourself when those lies come into, into question. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so good, so good. Well, I would love you guys have been quiet, please. Um, I know. Share. <laughs> I know that we got we got talking. It was probably hard to get a word in edgewise. We're passionate about this topic. Um, but please feel free to unmute yourself, comment, do something. We'd love to hear from you. You know, victories you've had, struggles you're having. Uh, we all want to come around you so that we're all we're all the herd together. <laughs> Help each other. Yeah, Lydia. So I just wanted to um share a little bit of uh what I've been kind of meditating on in this season recently for me. Um my my daughter has often put me into like a situation where I get triggered with some of the um, tones of voice, like the, the freedoms that she takes with her, um, mainly for her, it's her verbal freedoms. Um, and I think that it's been really helpful to, um, to know that I am not, the Lord created my brain to be elastic and be able to create new pathways. Like you guys were saying, like, at first, when you start the diet, it's like really, really hard to have the willpower to just make the right decisions that you know you should make. But um, in those emotional moments, I've also been like, okay, I need to be paying attention to what I'm feeling when she has the verbal freedom so that I don't respond out of self-defense or out of the victim mentality. I, I can operate and choose to operate out of a place where I remember God's authority that he's given to me and like I don't have to be ruled over by my emotional response um you know whether it's through like family of origin wounds and other things like that or it's just um I already had a bad day and this was like the thing that tipped me over the edge um so I really think that it's been helpful to like I don't know I think when we decide that we want to set a new method or a new process for dealing with something um to share that with other people to let them know like to let your husband know like hey this this is a new thing that I want to start like a new diet and I want you to keep me accountable I give you permission to keep me accountable on how my responses have been to when my daughter triggers me can you ask me about it you know like and just ask me on a daily basis um, because I think that when we acknowledge something that we don't like about how we're dealing with something, um, 
it does need a community to see any kind of um, permanent change. Otherwise, it's going to be like one week and you're going to go back to the same old way. Um, so, yeah, I really appreciate what you guys shared about some of the ways that we can be deceived. Like, oh, I'm just stuck. Like every time she does this, every time she takes her verbal freedom, I'm just going to always respond this way. Like mm -hmm. that is a lie from the evil one. And we, we are not um, in bondage to that. Right, right. Because we can give ourselves an identity. I'm an angry mom mm -hmm. or whatever it is. And that's not true. That's so good. Can I add to that? Yeah. Um, and I think this kind of hits also with Heather. You mentioned about the your mother-in-law too. You know, being around people that, you know, it, it feels like difficult people, right? Or difficult behavior or, you know, I, um, I, I feel like I have grown in that like lord help me to see them the way that you see them mm -hmm. and lord help me yeah. to have compassion for them because right we know hurting people hurt people right and so we definitely do are responsible for our own triggers for sure and i love what you're doing you're setting yourself up and and owning that and and accountable but even also, and you, and this isn't necessarily just just um, for you, Lydia, Lydia. Lydia. <laughs> it's just more in general, you know, like when when there is that difficult person, somebody mentioned in the chat, the whole, you know, uh, you know, some alcoholism or a diff, a, somebody that's difficult to love. And so how are you? How are how do you navigate those situations? And, and there's healthy boundaries and different things like that. But I just would pray, and, and believe me, I've got some experience with, with that whole situation. I'm not laughing, it's actually, could cry with you. Um, but like, Lord, help me to see them broken. Like, there's gotta be a reason that they are turning to alcohol. And you know what, help me to understand their story. Anne-Marie has really helped me in situations like that, um, where looking at their big picture of our, of our parents, our uncles and whatever that there's usually something more to that and it helps it doesn't make the pain go away but it helps give a little bit more understanding and to help navigate that and i've done that with my mother-in-law and father-in-laws you know tell me your story i'd love to hear more about your story and the more i've heard their story i realize oh my gosh they have done a really good job like they have taken the baton further even though I don't think the baton has gone very far. <laughs> I'm not talking about Don's family. I'm just using that as an example, but yeah. you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. We can have those thoughts, but it helps me to understand more and to, to help my reactions to that. Yeah. And so, and it just shows, you know, it keeps me on the humble side too. Um, isn't it so easy? We don't, I don't struggle with that. And so to easy to, Kind of past judgment when really wow they must be really hurting inside that they are turning to that they probably don't like being in that situation but they're not going to admit it because that's they're in bondage right but yeah just helping to position yourself your heart a little bit more and we all are talking about an enemy right this enemy that wants to rob kill and destroy and so look just helping lord help me to have eyes to look at this help me with my daughter Lord, is there something that maybe a conversation that we could have with her that might help these outbursts? Um, is there something that needs to be exposed? Whatever, you probably have already done that, Lydia, but just helping, now that I'm on the other side of parenting, looking back, I'm like, I wish I would have recognized, like, that's what that meant. Mm -hmm. That's what, you know, when I heard that, like, that would, that's what, how it played out. But maybe there's a conversation and sometimes it's something so small something so small can really make a huge impact in a relationship so and to keep praying for your your relationship with your daughter because the enemy wants to get in there too he wants to divide mom and daughters yeah. and um and so you know what no that's not going to happen in our family i'm going to own what's mine i'm going to get on the healthy side for me but but lord we need you to shine your light in this situation and we're just believing for a unified family and to stand stand for that and to fight for that in your prayer closet, because he does want that. Your daughter is not your enemy. It feels like it, but she's not your enemy. There's a, there's Satan, right? So just helping you with that, all of us with that mindset, with difficult people in our, that can actually be in our families.
Yes, exactly. Who else? Oh, I have seen Encanto. I can't remember. I can't remember the whole story. Oh, it was something with the grandmother. There was something about her story. Aww. I can't remember. Encanto makes me cry every time too. That is such a good movie. Um, I can relate to a lot of what's been said, especially the we have an enemy that wants to divide us. Um, my husband is going on a long trip this week to support his mom through a really big surgery. And I've never been alone with all my kids for this amount of time. So when you said you might be um, facing something that feels bigger than you, um, I've never spent a week just with them. And I will have, you know, drop-ins and the babysitter swinging by to help out here and there. But just to have that amount of time without his support at bedtime, and it feels very daunting. And I feel like I'm so grateful for for you guys and everything you're sharing and the timing of this, because when I saw the topic, I was like, I, this is going to help me to um, resist, you know, the messages of feeling lonely or just the temptation to be, to be divided, you know, because we're physically separated and just mentally how that can make me very weary. Um, so it's a timely message and I'm definitely going to be writing the verses down in the morning during my quiet time. So thank you very much. That's good. I heard someone once say, recognize, replace, repeat. Recognize, replace, repeat. And recognizing lies that enter our head when the enemy is poking us, just having the eyes. And that's, you know, Lord, give me eyes to see, recognize, and then replace. So if there's a lie being spoken, if there's a belief that we're having, you know, I can't do this, it's too hard. I'm not enough. I need my husband. Well, we do need our husband, but you know, all these things to replace it with the truth, what, what God says and know with his strength, I can do this and then repeat because it's going to happen again. <laughs> and I was just sharing um, with Julie lately. I've been waking up like a half hour to an hour before my alarm goes off. And I just feel like it's a really vulnerable time for me when thoughts can start to enter my head and I can, my fears and anxieties can well up. And so in my haze, I'm trying to repeat scripture or speak the truth to what it is. And that's helping. And so, you know, maybe you all have a week time, a week part of the day that you know I'm really susceptible at this point of the day. Uh, the sword of the spirit, that is, that is our weapon, the truth of God's word. And just having some verses ready, you know, on your phone, on a note card, on your refrigerator or whatever it is mm -hmm. to be able to battle. That's how we do battle. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Jessica, how old are your children? Um, almost 10, 8, 4, 3, and 16 months. Okay. Got a house full. <laughs> Piece of cake. <laughs> well, I, I love, I'll pass on a little nugget also that Anne Marie has also shared with me over the years is, you know, caring for our parents is such a, an, an honoring, um, something that's very honoring yeah. to them. And so your husband going and the sacrifice that you're making too is planting seeds mm -hmm. and your children are seeing that. Yes. And so, and maybe that will help you too. Not so much he's left me as opposed to, wow, he's doing the right thing. We are honoring his mom and recognizing that as seed that's being sown for your children watching that. And I that that might in and of itself might change your thinking of, you know what, we're doing the right thing. And wow, we are honoring his mom who's going through a hard time. And wouldn't we want that one day when we are older? And I know your kids are younger. It's hard to believe that one day you will be in that position, <laughs> but you will. And but these little things are you're you're setting an example. And this is when it starts is now. And so you have a 10 year old, they can grasp that. You have an eight year old, they can grasp that. So it's not so much daddy's gone as much as, wow, look what daddy's doing for his mom. Yeah, and you can, really, you can really shift it in a way that really can speak to their hearts too. Yeah, so beautiful. Well, I, I know some of you do yeah. have to go. Um, we will stick around, but Amory, could you let's say a blessing over us? 
I'm prepared to close us. And then if you need to go, we completely understand. If you want to hang around and chat about this a little bit longer, we'll hang out for a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to gather to encourage one another. And um, I thank you for the time and the effort that our two Julies have put into preparing and for sharing from their hearts to their personal experiences. And I do pray a blessing uh, over each one of these ladies in their homes and their children. Um, they desire just by virtue of making this time in their day to to grow in the grace and the knowledge of your love and your goodness. And um, I would just pray that whenever there is a, a negative thought that comes into their mind, that it would quickly be replaced by the spirit of God that it dwells within each one um, that has professed you as their savior. And uh, just strengthen strengthen each, each lady here and help her to be actually aware of your presence when this happens. And, uh, build her faith and increase um, just her love for you. And again, we thank you for this time. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.